Welcome to the Gibbs Cam 2015 video number four. Today we're going to talk about volume mill, volume mill wireframe, and volume mill solids. Now, if you are a maintenance customer, you would have received volume mill wireframe at no charge. This works directly off wireframe, like these two up here. There is an add in for volume mill solids if you want to work directly on solid models, uh, either two, two and a half D, or 3D models. So the first thing we're going to do is bring up my first process. And open up volume mill. This is the same dialog box for wireframe as well as solids here. So in order to use the high speed milling functions of volume mill, it's best to know the feeds and speeds to use with your end mill. And to do that, I rely pretty heavily on the milling advisor. This is from Helical, and this is a free download. This will help you quite a bit in choosing the end mill, the flutes, the coatings, uh, everything like that. And it'll give you a good recommended feeds and speeds. They always work really well. So for this, I'm going to cut uh, carbon steel at about 170 Brunel, half inch diameter tool, number of flutes, five. Uh, usually I recommend five to six flutes, sometimes even more. Uh, when you're cutting like steels, stainlesses, titanium, etc. Aluminum, I usually stay around a three flute. And the tool length here, length of cut is greater than 1.25 times the diameter, and it's less than two and a half times the diameter. This is the different coatings you can have on the tool. Of course, this is with helical, but uh, other manufacturers have uh, different coatings as well. And the tool path type, volume mill. And how are you holding this part? Poor, better, or best? I chose best. 40 taper machine. And you have the different types of end mill holders you can use for this. I find that ER collets do not work very well with uh, volume mill. It'll it tend to pull the end mill out of the collet. So it's best to use like a hydraulic chuck, milling chuck, or shrink fit. I'm just going to use a milling chuck. My maximum RPM of my machine that I'm using is 12,000 RPM and maximum feed rate of 1,000. So once you fill in the blanks up here, it'll tell you the recommendations for conservative and aggressive. Usually I start with conservative and I can slowly move up to aggressive if everything's working well. So they recommend an RPM of 9489, which I have up here, and a recommended feed rate of 328 inches of uh, inches per minute, which I have up here as well, and sidestep your cut side. 60 thou, which I have up here as well, and my depth of cut's going to be one inch deep. So I have all that filled out here as far as my depth RPM, and I'm going to use side mill only. Usually that's what I always use, so it cuts uh, with the side and never uh, takes a full diameter of cut with the end mill. That way you can go these kind of uh, feeds and speeds. Now remember, volume mill, wireframe, and solids are roughing only not finishing tool pass, so make sure you leave some stock and some Z stock as well. Now the repositioning parameters are, I have 0.1 because I want it to wrap at 100 thousandths above my part and that's where it's going to uh, plunge each time. The floor clearance, I have 10 thousandths, so every time it comes out of a cut, it's going to move up 10 thousandths before it high feed rates over to the next cut. And I have a high feed rate at 1,000. Now remember, with volume wheel wireframe and solids, uh, it will not put a G0 in your code because G0s are unpredictable. Even though though you're moving from point to point, depending on your machine manufacturer, the machine tool will get to its next point as fast as it can, not necessarily in a straight line. So volume wheel uses G1s, 2s, and 3s to get to the next point, uh, which is your fastest way to do it, and it uses your high feed rate. You will also have cleanup after previous tool, which we'll show you, and ignore stock cavity and use stock. On this one, um, this first part, the first cavity is three quarter deep, and the outside cavity is one inch deep. So we're going to choose hit flats after each pass. You can see the drop down menu here. Okay. And the plunge type I have is helix, and you can decide on your ramp feed rate and plunge angle. Usually I, I have the ramp feed rate a little slower than my uh, standard feed rate for side cutting. And my angle, I usually start about 3 degrees. That depends on your uh, end mill manufacturer, 
what they recommend. And minimum toolpath radius, don't make that too small, otherwise you get into the corners and then you start to have uh, chatter on the tool because you're taking a, a larger angle on your on your end mill. So watch that. Um, and of course your coolant um, and other options here as well. So with that, I'm just going to select my solid, click on do it. And volume of wireframe process is pretty fast. So let's do a cut part render. You can see it's going to helix down to my three quarter deep, but stay off the floor a little bit. And you can see it's side cutting and it's not ever using the full diameter of the tool. You can see it tangentially goes into the cuts, comes out, high feed rates over and back. Okay, for our next toolpath, we're going to use wireframe. So let me turn off rendering, and I'm going, going to load my next process. Now this is using the same tool. Let's open up the volume mill dialog box. Same tool, feed rates, everything's the same, other than I'm going to go uh, directly one inch deep and do not hit the flats. And I'm still going to use a helix, but I might change that to ramp this time. I'm going to, going to turn on my profiler. I'm going to select my air wall and the outside profile. Click on do it. And you can see now I have my tool path for the outside. Next, I'm going to bring in my next process. And this one's going to cut inside the cavity there. But one thing I'm going to add to that, you can do either a ramp or a helix, but some customers want to plunge in with a drill because that's a little faster, and then go uh, inside that hole with the end mill to cut out the pocket. So in order to do that, you need to uh, you do multiple processes here. So the first process I'm going to do is a drill, and I'm going to stay off the floor about five thousandths off these cavities here. And make sure you check the box that says pre-mill because that's what we're doing. We're drilling before we're milling. Make sure you put a check in this entry box. You usually don't need to worry about the rest of this. Just put a check in that entry box there. And then again, your volume mill wireframe here with the depth. Everything here is about the same. Click on your two cavities. Click on do it. Now let's cut part render. We rewind that, and we'll slow this down just a little bit. So we're going to do the outside first. Slow that down just a little bit so you can see it drilled the two holes for the cavities there and the end mill went right inside that cavity and started roughing out my cavity. And again goes into the second cavity and again roughs it out. Now when using, if you want to use the drill prior to the cutting of the cavities, you have to have this set for a helix. It won't work on a ramp. It has to be helix on there. OK, 
Okay, the next process we're going to do is on this part over here, you have a closed cavity and an open cavity. So I'm going to bring in my next process. We're going to open that up. And again, we're going one inch deep, same RPM, same feed rates on here. Click on the cavity, click on do it. And you can see we have a ramp here on that cavity. Okay, our next one is going to be an open wall. We're going to use the same parameters here as far as depth, RPM, feed rate, and ramp. But this is an air wall on these two sides here, so it's really not going to be using ramp. It's going to come in from the side, but it'll never plunge the full diameter of the end mill into the cavity there. So we're going to bring in that same process. We're just going to click on this cavity. You can see it goes out to the edge of the part here, and these two walls are air walls. And let's run the toolpath on that. Slow it down just a little bit. And again, at high feed rates back, you'll notice it's not jumping up and over the part. When it gets done with the cut, it high feed rates and actually goes around the corners as well. And notice when it goes into the cavity here, it's side cutting and not using the full diameter of the end mill and plunging. So that's going to reduce your end mill breaking. Okay, and our last cut we're going to do here we're going to cut this here, this part here with this web. I'm just going to select the um, geometry here and the air wall. And we'll run the cut part render on that one. Now this one we're leaving a little bit of stock. We're not going quite into the corner so much. So I want to come back with a smaller end mill and clean that up. So I'm going to bring in my next process, my last one. This is going to use a 3 8 end mill here. And for this one, I'm going to click on clean up after previous tool. Of course, the previous tool was half inch, previous stock was 10 thou, and the previous minimum toolpath radius was 100 thou. And now my uh, minimum toolpath now I have about 18 thousandths in there. And you can see now. I have where it cleaned up from the previous tool here. So if I cut part render that, you're going to see it cleaned up where the previous tool went on there. So thanks for watching the Gibbs Cam 2015 video number four.